Hello everyone. In this video here I'll be doing a demonstration on how to uh, diagnose a faulty knock sensor on your Subaru. Now this particular model here I have is a 99 Forester. Uh, basically with the vehicle here I was having uh, was having hard starts. Uh, the fuel mileage has uh, decreased uh, to some extent. Uh, also I've uh, had a loss in power and flat spots within the throttle itself when driving the vehicle. Uh, basically for the check engine lights, what I had here was I had a couple different ones, but both relating to the uh, knock sensor itself. Now one was P0325, which is a faulty knock sensor reading, and the other one is P1325, which is a uh, low input on the knock sensor itself. Uh, now basically for diagnosing the knock sensor here, now I've already replaced the one in the vehicle here and everything works fine after that. Um, Here's actually the plug itself for the knock sensor. You can see the knock sensor is directly located right down below there. Now basically what you want to do first here is we can take a multimeter here. And um, I don't have one on hand right at the moment right now, but basically unplugging this connector here, which is just held on with a small depressed tab on this side here. Now this is just one wire going into the sensor itself, and then the sensor does ground out on the engine block. So on this wire here with the key in the uh, on position. Basically what we want to do here, so this is basically starting up the ECU on the vehicle itself. What you want to look for here is a, a 5 volt reading. So we'll take one test prong to go through the sensor here on the uh, vehicle end of it. Another one on the negative terminal on the battery poster. And what we want to look for is uh, reading a 5 volts, uh, say plus or minus about 10%. Now this does depend um, on, uh, on how good your vehicle's battery is and it might uh, fluctuate a little bit depending on how good your connections are with your uh, test prongs. Now once we've tested the voltage, now we want to move on uh, ensuring that is correct. And if it's not correct, you may possibly have a fault with your wiring or maybe something uh, regarding with the ECU. Uh, that's something more you'll have to look into. Next what we're moving on to is the actual sensor all the way to the plug itself here. Now in order to remove the sensor here, uh, this is a 12 millimeter bolt. Uh, once you remove that bolt, you can just pull the sensor directly right off. Now I'll post the other uh, replacement video in the description below, just in case you're wondering how to remove this. So once you have the sensor off, I do have the old sensor with me right here. What you want to do here is you want to inspect uh, just inside the terminals here. Now you also want to inspect inside the terminal on the vehicle end itself. You want to look for uh, any corrosion, uh, some type of deterioration or something like that, which uh, might be making a faulty sensor itself. Next, for the wiring here, sometimes you might have a break in the wiring. Um, now this is possible, sometimes the wire does fatigue over time, um, or maybe the casing has been cracked and it does corrode in the inside here. So what we can do here, just popping off this metal retaining clip here, uh, basically we'll be, just be left with the sensor and the plug itself. And I'll just show you in a minute uh, what this looks like when it's disconnected. Once you get the wire disconnected here, basically what you want to do, just mentioned previously, is you want to use a small flat screwdriver. Going from this side here, you want to pop it up. Now there is a little plastic tab which sticks out which you have to uh, make it clear, which is uh, why it's better to go from this side as opposed to the opposite side. And once you pull it up, uh, it's got to be roughly about halfway because there is two uh, retaining tabs on each side there. Uh, I'll just show you here on the sensor. See it there and on the opposite side. Basically this plug should just come disconnected. So now we can just go through a test on the wire itself to ensure that there is no faults within the wire here. Now for this what we want to do here is just a continuity test to ensure there is a connection between point A and point B. Now for doing a continuity test I will include also another tutorial video in the description below uh, how you can do that yourself. Uh, basically what you'll need is a multimeter for that. Next, just as I mentioned before with this plug, you also want to check for any corrosion within the plugs itself especially in there. Now if there is any corrosion present, now you can go ahead and clean that and then after you have cleaned it in order to protect the area, uh, I would recommend putting a little bit of dielectric grease on there uh, just so you don't have any future problems down the road. Now once you've determined that there is no faults within the wiring here, now if there's a fault you can go ahead and repair the wire yourself. Uh, I definitely would be uh, buying an actual new sensor considering these are fairly expensive to buy from either the auto parts store or the dealer itself. Next what we'll be going on to here is using a multimeter, we'll be doing a test on the sensor. Basically what we're looking for here is we want to do an ohms reading. Uh, we're looking for a reading of 400k or 400,000 
uh, plus ohms within the sensor, which would indicate that it is still good. Now, if it is below this or zero, this means you do have a faulty sensor and it will need to be replaced. So basically taking your one prong, we'll go on the inside here on the steel casing, within the uh, sensor here, make sure it has contact, and then we'll go with the other prong inside the electrical plug here, and you just want to do a reading and see what the screen shows up. Now I've already done a test on this myself, and I've uh, determined that there is um, zero reading on the sensor here, so obviously I do have a faulty sensor within the vehicle. Now when you've also removed the sensor, Another thing I also want to make note here is that you also want to make sure it does make contact down below on the block itself so you want to ensure that is clean and the sensor is getting a proper ground itself. Now just on the back side of the sensor here you can see there's also metal contact on here and it's somewhat corroded so uh, that is something you'll want to clean up if you're getting any faulty readings uh, within the sensor here. Now the one last step which we want to do here is to do a visual inspection of the plastic casing around the sensor itself. Now basically what you want to look for here is just any cracking. Uh, what the cracking can do, it can actually expose any moisture within the electronics itself which uh, in turn would um, destroy the sensor. So really just giving it a look around, look for anything, you see any signs like that. And if you determine any uh, cracks, uh, you possibly do have also a faulty sensor or it will soon be on its way out. Uh, you can see on this one here, it's a little hard to see on the camera, so I'll just add a picture in. Uh, you can see there is a very small a hairline crack in there so therefore uh, it's an easy spot for moisture to get into. Now as mentioned earlier if you haven't gone to it already I have included a, a link in the description below on how to replace the sensor itself. This concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions please don't hesitate to post them below. Also please subscribe to my channel for further tutorial videos as well as rate this video. Thank you for watching.